In this video, I show you how to optimize a garden bed to get the most out of your gardening. Dig a deep hole. Even in the deepest section in there, break it up on the bottom. Add a little stuff before you start to spread your modified materials around to fill up your bed. This bed will be about two and a half feet deep full of really lush materials that will absorb and also keep the soil loose. Lots of moss and compost, mulch, a whole lot of perlite. Some all-purpose um, fertilizer. You can see that this does not have a high nitrogen content. It has lots of good components that plants love. Kelp mill adds lots of silicon. A bit of this gypsum is sprinkled into the mixture. It'll add calcium, sulfate, calcium, sulfur, and it'll keep the soil from compacting. And also that combination of moss and perlite can uh, make things a bit acidic. This will, this will uh, take the pH up to uh, balance it better. That one was a nice uh, amendment as well. This is a high nitrogen content bat guana. This is going to be moved, mixed into the top few inches to get the plants a good, hot, fast start. And then after it's used, and as we go into flower, of course, I'll use bat guana that will be high in phosphate, not nitrogen. Tools. These come in handy when you're moving a bunch of earth. I'm going to use the uh, garden fork there to break some soil up here, show you how really easy it is. Yeah. Just sort of wiggle it in there and use the leverage to break it forward. Then you can use the fork to break things up. You can also use your shovel to get rid of all the clods. The soil's had a lot of mulch and compost put it in the past, so it tends to uh, not require, it's much easier to break up. But anyhow, that's how you use the garden fork. A handy little tool. Makes things a lot easier. I've nearly completed the double, double dig. Dug down one layer and then another layer. Once that's cleaned out, I'll break that up with the garden pitchfork and, or the garden fork, and work some nutrients into it before I start to convert this soil into soil like that by adding the amendments. When the clods break up, sometimes you'll find rocks in, inside of them. You want to make sure you toss all the good sized rocks out of your garden. They aren't going to do you much good now. Of course, all this decomposed rock is full of minerals, making this particular soil very mineral rich. I guess now we might call this triple dig because I took the garden fork and broke the soil up in the bottom of that two and a half foot deep hole up down about another four to six inches. Broke the material up through a layer of moss on top of it. And I've also put a nice crusting of moss in the side of that pile of soil that I have right next to the hole. Next I will apply the other, the perlite and other amendments. Then I'll just simply rake it down the slope into the hole to fill it with the mixed material. There's a method to my madness. Or maybe there's a madness to my method. So now it looks like a snow-covered slope here. And the same down and below. Through about maybe one cup of kelp over the entire area and two cups of all-purpose fertilizer. Can't really see it, it's so dispersed. Now I'll take the um, fork and mix the material in the bottom before I take a shovel and hoe and scrape this material down into the trench. Now I'll just keep doing this over and over again until all the material has been converted into something that looks like this material over here. After that material has been mixed into the hole, 
I like to sprinkle a light layer of gypsum or some other calcium product, whatever's best for your local environment. And that will uh, make the acidic mixture of the peat moss a little less so and make things more ideal for vegetation. You might want to wear a mask or at least pull your t-shirt over your face when you're throwing that stuff around. All these fine powders can bother your lungs. Then I like to take my garden hoe, I mean garden fork, and go through the garden and just mix up all this material and even it out, make sure it's all pretty evenly distributed. It doesn't take very long. You can see that now the soil's really easy to move around, quite loose. But with all that peat moss in there, it's also going to retain moisture nicely. And you do it over and over and over again until the entire pile is back in the hole. Now this one section, one quarter of this garden space will take me about, oh, four or five hours, six hours on two different days, so about 12 hours time to process that much material. So a couple weekends to complete this entire bed. So you keep doing that over and over and over until finally you have a beautifully prepared bed of soil to grow your garden in. After the plants become established, I'm going to cover this with some straw to hold that moisture in. And this will require a lot less watering than a garden bed that's full of dense soil without much that can absorb and all the nutrients that we added will be quickly absorbed as well. Some may be curious about this retaining wall system that you see here. Now this is a very quick system to install. I drove concrete of steel stakes in the ground about every four feet and then applied a metal mesh to the inside of that and then put at least one layer of construction silt cloth on the inside driving all the wooden stakes down into the ground as well. Now it holds up, holds up well. This has been up for about five years. Looks almost the same as it did. Sunk a little in a couple places. The beauty of this is I could put expanded lath on the outside if I wanted to and cover it with a stucco membrane or there's probably 50 other things. You, you could put cob or stack rock or any number of things on the outside of the wall to, to strengthen it and make it look more attractive in the long run. But it works and it's quick and not that expensive. Please visit growlightsource.com, your source. Use the contact page if you have any need for specific information.